Warning. It is important that prior to performing this or any other safety or service procedure on any Heil product that the person performing the work has both read and firmly understands the product operator's manual, including the detailed safety instructions that accompany this vehicle. If there is anything that is unclear or that you do not understand, do not attempt to operate the vehicle or perform any of the service or maintenance tasks called out in this video. Quarantine the area from bystanders, walk away from the vehicle, and contact your supervisor immediately for clarification. It is also important to ensure that you are wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment, hereafter referred to as PPE, prior to beginning this or any other service or maintenance procedure. Hey, I'm Travis Wallen, the service guru here at Highland Environmental in beautiful Fort Payne, Alabama. Thanks for joining me at the Service Shack. You know, the Heil 5000 rear loader is one of the most popular rear loaders in the world. Fleets across the country depend on Heil 5000, just like this one, to pick up trash every day. Today we're going to talk about how to make pressure adjustments on your Heil Durapack 5000 rear loader so that it remains optimally productive and profitable. Before you begin adjusting the pressures, you'll need to make sure that the hydraulic oil is at or near operating temperature. Check the underbody primary valve to see if it's warm. If it isn't, warm the oil by locking the tailgate, pressing the throttle advance button, moving the ejector panel in and out through five cycles, and then run the tailgate packing mechanism through 10 cycles. Install two 0 to 3,000 psi glycerin filled pressure gauges, one on the underbody valve to check the main system pressure, the other gauge on the ejector line for unload pressure. Be sure to clean the main relief of any dirt or grease. The packing mechanism, which consists of a lower panel and an upper panel, is controlled by two levers at the curbside rear area of the tailgate. The lower panel and the upper panel functions can be operated independently using one lever at a time. Adjust lower panel hydraulic detent. Note, all adjustments must be made with throttle advance engaged. Number one. Start engine and engage PTO or front mount pump, depending on how your specific unit is configured. Number two, place the upper panel in the fully out position. Number three, turn PTO or front mount pump to the off position. Number four, turn the engine ignition to the off position, remove the keys, and follow the lockout tag out procedure. Number five, Make sure all mechanical linkage is free of any binding. Move the lower packer panel spool by shifting the panel control lever in both directions. Number six, remove any dirt and grease around the underbody valve main relief. Number seven, to lower the main relief pressure, remove the dome nut, loosen the lock nut, and turn the adjusting screw out counterclockwise two complete rotations to decrease the pressure setting. Number eight, take the unit out of lockout tag out and start the engine. Number nine, engage the PTO or front mount pump and turn the throttle switch to on. Number 10, move the lower packer panel control lever to shift the spool in either direction. Check detent with the panel in the down position. Number 11, Slowly turn the main relief adjusting screw clockwise to increase the pressure. When the spool kicks out of detent or returns to the neutral position, note the pressure reading on the gauge. The correct kick out pressure for the lower packer panel is 2400 PSI, plus or minus 50 PSI. Number 12, if the setting is not within the specified pressure range, remove the rubber plug from the end of the panel spool to expose the detent release adjusting screw. Caution, never stand in the hopper or on the hopper seal. Be especially alert and cautious while adjustments are being made on the packing mechanism with the machine running. Number 13, turn the adjusting screw into the spool clockwise to increase the kick out pressure or turn the adjusting screw counterclockwise to lower the pressure. Note, be careful not to force the adjusting screw or you could damage the internal adjusting rod and break the valve. 
Number 14, repeat steps 8 through 12 to check the results. The ejector unload valve is located beside the underbody valve. There are two different relief adjustments to make on this valve. Ejector unload valve. Note, all adjustments must be made with the throttle advance engaged. Number one, start the engine and engage the PTO or front mount pump. Number two, place the upper panel in the fully out or rearward position. Number three, turn PTO or front mount pump to the off position. Number four, turn engine ignition to the off position, remove the keys and follow the lockout tagout procedure. Number five, disconnect the top kickout on the tailgate control lever. First, remove the retaining cap screw from the kickout pivot, then pull the control lever off of the pin. Number six, start the engine and engage the PTO or front mount pump. Number seven, push the upper panel control lever to move the upper panel to the full up position. Manually shift the lever back to neutral. Adjust relief valve B. Number one, lock the tailgate and adjust the main system pressure until the gauge reads 2100 PSI. Number two, remove the plugs covering the relief valve B and relief valve C on the ejector unload valve. Number three, turn the adjustment screw on valve C counterclockwise two full rotation turns. Number four, turn the adjustment screw on valve B clockwise two full rotation turns. Number five, pull the ejector cylinder control lever to extend the cylinder fully out and momentarily bottom out the cylinder. Number six, release the lever. The pressure is now trapped in the cylinder. Number seven, check the pressure gauge in the ejector line. It should read approximately 1800 PSI. Note, if pressure does not hold, turn the relief valve B adjusting screw clockwise a half rotation and repeat steps five, six, and seven. Number eight, push the upper panel control lever and leave it in the detented position with the outside cylinder bottomed out in the retracted position. Number nine, while keeping an eye on both pressure gauges, slowly turn relief B adjusting screw counterclockwise until the pressure reaches 2100 PSI. The ejector line pressure gauge will fall rapidly to zero PSI. Relief B is now set to 2100 PSI. Note, manually shift the upper panel control lever to neutral. Adjust relief valve C. Note, make all adjustments with throttle advance engaged. Number one, lock the tailgate and adjust the main system pressure until the gauge reads 2350 PSI. Number two, using a screwdriver, turn the slotted adjusting screw on relief C clockwise two and a half rotations. Number three, Pull the ejector cylinder control lever to extend the cylinder full out and momentarily bottom out the cylinder. Number four, release the lever. Pressure is now trapped into the cylinder. The pressure gauge in the ejector line should now read approximately 1800 PSI. Note, if pressure does not hold, turn the relief C adjusting screw clockwise half turn and repeat steps three and four. Number five, Push the upper panel control lever and leave it in the detented position, outside cylinders bottomed in the retracted position. Number six, observing both gauges, slowly turn the relief C adjusting screw counterclockwise until relief C reaches 2350 PSI. The ejector line pressure gauge will fall rapidly to zero PSI. Relief C is now set to 2350 PSI. Note. Manually shift the upper panel control lever to neutral. Number seven, reinstall the plugs covering reliefs B and C. Number eight, reconnect the top kickout. Do the following to reconnect the top kickout. A, reattach control lever to the pin. B, reattach the retaining cap screw from the kickout pivot. 
Number nine, follow the procedures to readjust the main relief. Underbody valve, main relief, and pump pressure. Be sure to remove all dirt and grease around the main relief. Note, all adjustments must be made with throttle advance engaged. Hydraulic oil must be at or near operating temperature. If not, warm the oil by using the directions called out earlier in this video. Checking the system pressure. Check the system pressure before making adjustments to the main relief and pump pressure. Do the following to check the system pressure. Number one, lock the tailgate and pull the tailgate raise control lever. Number two, read the system pressure gauge. It should read 2500 PSI plus 50 minus zero PSI. If not, continue with the adjustment procedure. Adjusting main relief valve. To adjust the main relief, remove the dome nut and loosen the jam nut on the main relief on the underbody valve. With tailgate closed and locked with turnbuckles, pull the handle for the tailgate raise with throttle advance switch on. If the pressure is too low, turn the main relief clockwise until you get 2500 PSI. If the pressure is too high, turn the main relief counterclockwise until you see 2500 PSI. Number one, tighten the lock nut on the underbody main valve. Number two, check the system pressure again. Number three, remove the pressure gauges from the lines. Number four, check for leaks. Number five, replace dome nut. Upper panel kick out adjustment. Number one, Retract outside cylinders to the full up position. Number two, check the distance from the cylinder packing nut to the center of the cylinder mounting pin. The distance should be four and three quarters inch, plus or minus a quarter of an inch. Number three, if incorrect, loosen jam nuts and turn the adjusting rod clockwise to lengthen the rod or counterclockwise to shorten the rod. Lower kick out adjustment. Number one, extend the outside cylinder to the full out position. Number two, check the distance from the cylinder packing nut to the center of the cylinder mounting pin. The distance should be 39 inches plus zero minus a quarter of an inch. Number three, if incorrect, loosen jam nuts and turn the adjusting rod clockwise to lengthen the rod or counterclockwise to shorten the rod. Blade back off relief adjustment. A relief is provided in the tailgate valve to allow the lower panel to back off slightly, two to five inches of cylinder stroke, during the final stages of packing the load. If the cylinders back off excessively, five to seven inches of cylinder stroke, the back off relief needs to be adjusted or replaced. Congratulations, you have now completed your system pressure adjustments on your Heil Durapack 5000 rear loader. On behalf of everyone at Heil, I hope this video helps you understand the proper way to adjust pressure on your Durapack 5000 rear loader. Following these procedures will help ensure your rear loader packs loads like we designed it to, just like when it left the factory. Remember, we're here to help in any way we can. Be safe out there, and we'll see you next time, here at the Service Shack.